Mm. Wow. Okay, mm. I don't know how he came in, but if this is how they are grooming people and they are living this way, there won't be much of an issue in society next mm. time. Just say. <laughs> we are all born into different backgrounds and have walked different paths. Lah. And also, we have seen different things. So I want to ask you guys, thus far, do you think life is fair? It's a very difficult question. I think life hasn't been completely unfair to us. Mm. But if it's broader, do I think life is fair in general? Then clearly not. Mm. I mean, don't want to talk about this issue, lah, but see what's happening at you know, Gaza and all. Lah. Mm. It's not fair. Lah. Mm. But I, I also believe life is not fair. But I believe that I'm quite blessed also. Yeah. Too blessed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's unfair. <laughs> I believe is like one of the biggest blessings is I born in Singapore. No? Mm. Mm. If I born with the same thing I have, right, my same family, my same background, right, in other country, right, I will not be where I am today. 100%. I think it's not fair also. You remember when we went to Genting? Straight away what we get? The gold yeah, card. Exactly. Just mm. because we are Singaporeans and then we got the gold member for casino. Special treatment mm. and all. <laughs> Oh, then we lose the money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> go there, drink coffee. The gold stand on the cup. Ah. <laughs> Two cup. Yeah. Expect the silvers to make for us. You all remember the music, you know? The silver and the classic making the music. So <laughs> <laughs> jokes aside, right, okay. For me, I think uh, life is also unfair. Lah, because like, whatever you all mentioned, some can be born in a third world country, some can be born in a first world country. And even right, if you are born into a first world country, if you go even more micro, some are born into a low income family. While well, some born into a upper upper class family. And most of the kids that come from a low income family don't break out of generational poverty cycle. Mm. Yeah. That's true. I wanna ask you guys, have you guys heard of equal dreams before? Mm. No. Okay. So it is a residential campus. Built to help disadvantaged kids lah. Mm. So kids that are in a low income families, they are living in a rented flat where often they are limited by their environment. I would say, yeah. So for example, a seventeen years old uh, girl who got their her studies affected because she had to work part time, and she said that she thinks a lot about money, even mm. in school because cannot eat lah. Yeah. So this is like a boarding school for underprivileged kids. Uh. Okay, so it's like a, a campus where they will house kids, right? Okay, during the weekdays after their school. Okay, which then. So they sleep there and then they yes. go to school from there. Yes. Okay. Oh. During the weekdays. So in the campus, they'll provide free tuition and also like holistic teaching, like is what they uh, try to trying to do, such as like leadership and critical thinking training, nutrition and health programs, and also interesting courses mm. like coding and three D printing. That is amazing. I didn't tell you when I read this article, I was, I was so happy that they that somebody actually started this initiative. No, and okay, I will show you a video of an example of a kid that has uh, been with, in this program for I think about a few months. But what a big task to undertake, though. Mm. Into much activity such as play games. Stay home, school, repeat. But now, ever since I joined, it's quite different. I do activities, I play games of course, but I talk to my friends much more often. I did 3D painting, coding, baking, and soon PC building. It really gives me like a lot of courage whenever I do these activities because it helps me bond with my friends, my mentors, and the people that are working with us. What do you miss most about not home? Uh, mostly my mother's cooking. It's like it's like a reward after staying here for four to five days. So Monday to Thursday we stay here. Friday we go back home after school. I try to spend most of my time with my family, like to know that I care for them. And He's the parents. Well now at home, he can help me with the laundry. He can help me with the housework. And also he become more outspoken, outgoing, and he can like discuss everything with me. His grade is going up, also. Hmm. Wow. Okay, mm. I don't know how he came in, but if this is how they are grooming people and they are living this way, there won't be much of an issue in society next mm. time. Mm. So this guy is growing up to be a very good person, a very uh, 
well mannered and well spoken gentleman. Mm. I he's so his much mindset super good also. Yeah. So yeah. okay, this is how you say right. How how kids are getting enrolled into this right? They are because it's a I would say a pilot program. So they are enrolling only a few batches of kids first. So they are being very very specific. So the so this is a new initiative. Yes. Then so they have been in the program for how long already? I think uh, a few months. Okay, okay. it is not a uh, new new lah. I think uh, the ideas are coming out. I think last year October, and so it was rolled new. out uh, this year Jan. So it's still new. I would say. So the criteria that they have in uh, place, right? Okay, are uh, very strict for now. They say mm-hmm. so they will relax after a while. So the criteria, the child or family must qualify for the following government financial scheme, public rental scheme, MOE FAS, which is the financial assistance scheme. And also, uh, Comcare short to medium term assistance or long term assistance. The child must also be in Sec One or Sec Two in an MOE school. I mean, the child must be a citizen or PR, and the child must aspire to be in Eco Dreams, and have parents who are supportive of this aspiration to be in Eco Dreams. That's mm. a great starting point. Yeah, mm. a lot of people within this basket, and they want people who actually want to change mm-hmm. and improve their lives. So what do you guys think about this campus? I think it's very very meaningful. Like, do you guys remember we went to uh, one service center that time? Uh, for family service center. Uh, yeah, family. Sure, bus. Yeah, correct. So we had this. Remember, we had this dream jar. Mm, jar and, of dreams. Uh, jar of jar of dreams, right? And then we wanted uh because we wanted to we just conducted a short like uh, activity for the kids, right? And then we spoke some stuff, and then we wanted the kid to write their dreams in the jar. And then one of the boys, right, he actually said that um, he wanted like to change to have a better life or something along those lines. Lah. And he's quite young, but you know that based on what he wrote that moment, right, he's actually very mature. And you know that that boy is a very, you know, proper boy like that. So I feel like this kind of campus, right, can help this kind of people who really want to fight out of their own, you know, environment, mm, mm. break out of the problem. Give them the potential to... Yeah. Climb up the social it's, ladder. It's la. so mm. good, my God. So what about you guys? For me, right, last time I grew up in a children's home. So I was like there since I was 7 to 12 years old. But you bully people there. They take their chicken, remember? Chicken drumstick. Oh, you like chicken? The right of passage, right? Yeah, the right of passage. Right? Maybe we got uh, older kids. Hazel is uh, normal over there. Uh, right? But you have the P6 there. Yeah, uh. yeah, yeah. we got older, then you you know, you can you can mm. bully a bit. Uh. You're also your brothers, uh, right? <laughs> But one thing is good, right? Like for me, uh, like right now, right? If I go look for like people in the home, right? My friends, right? Sad to say, lah, their life is not the best, lah. They mm. join gangs, they do all the vices and all, lah, right? Drink at like, Filipino bars. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know really what your friends are doing, lah. Huh? Mm. <laughs> but but I'm cause for them right because they after the home after the twelve years old they either go to boys town or they go back to their family which doesn't give them a proper guidance. For me I was blessed like I was adopted by a by a family that take care of me until the age that I moved out like. But then really right I was already like mature in a sense. I already have a proper um background yeah like mm-hmm. I, I get my diploma and all. But a lot a lot of my friends from the home right they don't they don't have this opportunity like me. Mm-hmm. Yeah mm-hmm. so. For these kids, right, like you say, oh, they are like set one, set two, right? Mm. Mm. Those are the years I feel uh, that is important for them. So let's say, let's say all my other peers, because they, it's a home, they have to go out 12 years old, right? They go back to their family, right? And their family cannot really take care of them, right? They go here, is good, eh, I feel. Mm. And mm. yeah, to add on, right, you know, like set one, set two is where the rep, you know, you become rebellious, right? Mm. And then like before that, you probably already like, you know, uh, know how life is with your parents. And then when you come to this, right, it's like, you know, you will appreciate this so much more than mm. if you never experienced the that 12 years of your life before mm. that. Mm. Uh, so and I, the difference will make you want to do even, one, even better in uh, life. Yeah, I, correct. I tell you, appreciate one of the girls, right, when she saw a table that she can study in, uh, she was so excited for it. Because she said that at home is so cramped, she has to share with her two mm. younger siblings. Mm. And that she don't even have the proper space and environment mm. to study in. Currently, Vivian has to share her study space with her two siblings. It gets like cramped. Do you ever have your friends come over? Uh, oh no, because like, it's a small space, so like they, they might be uncomfortable. How do you feel about having your own space now? Happy. Because now like, things won't get lost so easily. 
What is the one thing that you're most excited about being here? The new friends, yeah, and the new things that I'll get to learn. What kind of things are you interested to learn? Maybe coding. And you know, like for sec one, sec two, right? In normal school, ah, we probably don't have three D printing, like a few mm. things, you know. Mm. Like in this campus, right? They are trying to push them to be better than the normal school students. No, it's yes. like you get to experience uh coding or this set, a lot of sec one, sec two. They haven't learned coding. Mm. So I think it's wow, that is I tell you it's yeah, so good much exposure. Mm. Yeah. I, I think that the creator or like the founder of this mm. is wow brilliant. Like mm -hmm. So he said that because this is a pilot mm. and a, a pilot program and now I think they are housing only about 30, 30 kids. Mm -hmm. And in the future, right, which I'm so happy to hear, they will be increasing into two hundred and forty kids mm. on the campus. Per year or so I don't know how how they uh, what's their inflow and outflow like, but each kid, right, okay, they can house a kid up to six years or after they are proceeding to tertiary education. Mm. So like poly, uh, or they will still house JC kids, la. maybe like poly and all this, la. then they have to let them go. La. Which I feel is, is more than enough. <coughs> because like what you all mentioned, at that four years of age, at that age, right, is the most critical stage where they absorb a lot of other things mm. and when certain things start to get yeah. set in stone. Uncertain yeah. with... Uh, they are trying to find their identity at that moment. Mm. Mm. That, yeah. that period. I think 240 kids, while it will not really make a big difference, is a big task to undertake. La. It's mm. a lot, no. You know, in my <laughs> home, uh, <laughs> my home only got like 50 kids max. No? Mm. A lot, a lot. 240 is a lot. <laughs> point out something in the video you remember the boy said i get to also talk to the like uh, instructor or like the facilitator of the course or mm. what right i feel that uh, that is like a rub off eh. you know like last time when we conduct young elites right certain kids the way they behave uh, is very also dependent on how we behave also yep. and like some parents they want their kids to rub off based on our personality and stuff right and um, it's just the overall vibe you know so i feel that you can see the boy, the way he behaves, the way he talks. You know when he say them, right? He say them. Like, you know, there's a, there's a, it's just, it's just The different. way he speaks, how he come out of English and his confidence is, you can see that it's good. Yeah, correct. I think the yeah. mentors that they have in place are critical. Mm. Because like what you mentioned, if let's say now the skills and the values and how they behave and all is going to rub off, then this is probably the most important consideration they should mm. have. Mm. Yeah. Sarah, last time, one of the reasons why she wanted Jabez to join us it's is the same mainly reason. for this. Yeah, so you... that he can mingle with us. That's her only reason. Yeah, correct. Like, you know, Mark Cuban, the companies that he wants to invest, right? He wants it only because uh, if he, they can uh, coach their, her, Doctors. his daughter. Mm. Yeah. To hang out, to, yeah. to play. So that's the only condition for him to put money in your company. That's it. And I dollar who's 17. Well, listen, Alexis, I want them to meet you. And I want them to learn from you. And maybe you'll even learn some from them. The owner is very open-minded. He realizes that Equal Dreams is new and he's open to a lot of ideas. If you guys right were to suggest, okay, one thing to add to their curriculum, what would it be? I think there are a lot of things that can benefit the kids. Learn how to conduct yourself well. Public speaking is also very important. Learn how to manage finance. Learn probably learn morality. Because mm. A lot of people in this kind of situation, as Joseph has exemplified, a lot of them will just take the wrong path. Mm. But if you have... Exemplified. <laughs> your friends, what? Right? Oh, okay. uh, if, let's say, they have these kind of discussions among themselves with the mentors, with other kids and all, they'll more likely stay on the right path. Because, mm. 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 like, my friend from Boys Town, all this, right? Your they... friend. Okay. <laughs> Boys Town, all this, right? You know what? That's, what's one thing... Boys Town teach you, know? it's all about brotherhood only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do have all these other um, curriculum to help shape the kids. Yeah, so mm -hmm. brotherhood, brotherhood, uh, then they join all the gangs. Yeah, yeah. One join, all join. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I, I like, I really like this. La. So I think like what Shavi mentioned, right, the concept of money, I think it's important to teach the kids also. Yeah, because the thing about kids that comes from uh, this type of uh, low income family or like rental flats, right, they often are surrounded in an environment where they will pick up habits from parents spending habits saving habits bad habits like vices and whatnot if their goal is for them to break out of like generational poverty cycle i think a concept of money should be taught to them how to handle properly how to save so that they don't fall back into that loop 
they should learn the technical things and also the mental things. Mm. Because mm. it's okay to be broke. Mm. Broke doesn't last forever. Mm. It's yes. not okay to be poor. Mm. Poor is a mental thing. Okay, so then, if they were ever to need volunteers, would you guys sign up for it? I think I would, eh. I think I probably would. I will. I think I definitely would. I, I think you would enjoy. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> us doing young if, elites. If let's say uh, we are like financially stable, right? It means like there's no worry with money. No, but I think he's saying right now. Mm, right, right now. You Bro, right now. I'm busy. <laughs> and, and that's the reason why I say I think I I would. Because I'm, uh, I'm considering how busy we are right now. Oh, mm. It's like a, also a... I don't know. Because I feel right, this part right, would be our fulfilling part in our schedule. Because we are busy, we are earning money, we are, you know, shooting things as... Uh, okay, like every Sunday, la, every Sunday la, I give yeah. my Sunday to <laughs> It's like, and you know how much we love kids. Okay, yeah. Teaching them. You know, to be honest, right, I will still dedicate time la, because I realise uh, some of my old students, right, as in students that they graduated, the ones that they have the heart, uh, they, the ones that they really appreciate, right, Till now, right, they still text me and like three years later, four years later, they still text me that it's because of you, that's why certain things. I feel like that is the... I don't need any money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's, that's it's, the reason why we do... It's so do much money. of love, so much, you know, it comes from that place. And that place is where I feel that this is, you know, the place is... Yeah, wow, I tell you... Okay, so Eco Dreams. If this video reaches you, okay, do reach out to us and see how we can contribute. And if there, you know, you have, have any uh, volunteer programs that we can take part in, okay, do let us know. Okay, so that's the end of today's episode. Till next time. Bye bye. <laughs>